Hello and welcome to this brief video where we explain how we define integrals over 3D shapes. The first thing we need to consider is our toolbox, what we already know. Our toolbox consists essentially of Rn integration. So this is conventional integration from single variable calculus, as you can see over R in an interval AB, as well as multiple integration that we've defined over R2, R3, and in fact, it's easy to see that we could go on and define integration in Rn in general. We should be seeing spaces where we perform our integration as parameter spaces. So these are spaces of orderly straight variables that um, somehow account for more complicated shapes. So what we want to do is to extend these ideas of integration to shapes in R3, so curves, surfaces, and volumes in R3. So, of course, we're going to use the basic concept of a parameterization to do this, and we're going to see how all three integrals, curved integral, surface integrals, and volume integrals, share the same pattern when it comes to the concrete definition. So let's go over curves first. When dealing with curves, what we're thinking about is a special subset of R3 that, in some sense, we regard as being linear or one-dimensional. Now, the way we make this precise is by saying that the curve is given by a parameterization of this form. So a map from a real interval i to R3, so that is coordinates x, y, z, depending on the parameter t, in such a way that the image of this map uh, is precisely c, the curve, the set in, in R3. So a situation that we have can be depicted as follows. So you can see here on the left, um, the parameter axis and on the right you can see three-dimensional space where R, our map, our parameterization map is sending uh, our parameters. And of course um, we're going to consider some function that is defined in the bulk of, of all the space. So the problem is how do we define this green integral, the, the integral of f over the curve? The basic idea is that we use um, Riemann integral definition just like we did in, in ordinary calculus, uh, but now we need to change the notion of the length of an, of an interval of the parameter axis. And uh, that basically accounts for the geometry and the concept that our parameter axis is this straight orderly set that gets sent into a more curvy and bendy world of, of R3. So it goes from being a boring straight interval into an interesting curved bent uh, curve in, in space. So. The way we do this, as, as illustrated here in this yellow box, where uh, we recover the essential concept of Riemannian integration, is by this formula of the, the green integral. So the green integral is the notation we use to denote uh, the integral of a function over curve C. And then you can see there are two factors. There is a function that is composed with a parameterization, and then there is some factor given by the length of the tangent vector. Now, as the picture is indicating, that is the factor that converts um, the length of, a, of an interval in the, in the parameter axis to the length of uh, a segment of, uh, of, the, of the curve, so a, a bit of arc length. Um, so the norm of this vector, the length of this vector, is that proportionality factor. And so that's how we get that formula. Now, indeed, um, for the, fun the constant function 1, uh, this formula indeed recovers what we want, which is the length of the curve, the geometric length of the curve. So similarly, we can proceed now for a surface where our starting point is indeed some sheet uh, uh, seen in, in R3, which is again some special subset of R3. And again, we make this precise by saying that it is given by a parameterization, R, sending two parameters this time, U and V, into coordinates x, y, z in such a way that the image of some region of the UV space of parameters um, precisely uh, gives S as, as a set in R3. Now, what is the picture for this? Well, we have this kind of situation. We have the UV space with a region. D um, need not be uh, rectangular. It could be any region, but, in, but it's indeed flat. It's indeed in this orderly flat space of UV values. And then it gets sent into R3 and it then it twists and, and and bends in interesting ways and it gives our, our surface S. So now the question is the same. We want to define 
uh, for some function that is globally defined on all the bulk of space, but in particular we'll restrict to S, we want to define this green integral. We want to define the integral of F over the surface S. It's all curvy and bent. Um, so the basic idea is that we need to account, just like we did for curves, for this uh, discrepancy between the area of a unit square in, in, in the UV space and the area of uh, the corresponding uh, image uh, parallelogram. In that is tangent to the surface. So as the geometry indicates, we can define some, some tangent vectors to our surface basically by considering the parameter curves, uh, the u and v curves. Um, and so taking their tangent means taking these partial derivatives of, of the parameterization. Um, and then the proportionality factor between the two will be given by the length of the cross product, because of course the cross product is um, giving you the area of the parallelogram that is spanned by these two vectors. And so, indeed, the final formula looks like this. We have the function composed with the parameterization times the conversion factor between these two areas. Again, if you set the function to 1, your formula will give you um, the, to the total surface area of your surface. And then finally, for a volume, we have the, the same story. We have R, some region of R3 as a subset, which can be described by a parameterization, just like a curve or a surface, uh, but now with three parameters, A, B, C, in such a way that uh, the image of some region B of the A, B, C space gets sent to uh, our region R. And of course, this is the kind of picture that we get in this situation. We have B in some volume in orderly parameter space some, some form of uh, straight object or flat object. Uh, it need not be straight in some sense, it need not be linear, it could be a bulk, something co something complicated, but it certainly lives in this space where everything is, is orderly and we have a clear uh, distinction of parameters. Now it gets embedded into uh, R3 in, in possibly curved and bent ways. Uh, so we see how this uh, rainbow color curves uh, that are straight, these are the parameter curves, get sent into this curved, um, um, lines in, in the region R. Um, and so, of course, we have the same issue. If we want to define uh, this green integral of a function defined over the bulk region R, um, we need to account for this uh, conversion of volume. So uh, what is uh, the, the volume of some cube in, in our parameter space, delta A, delta B, delta C, needs to be transformed into some uh, volume of the parallelepiped um, incre uh, increment of v, so it's it's this delta v uh, value. So this is just the real number that we assign to uh, that particular deformed cube under under the parameterization. So it is easy to see that uh, it would be the triple product uh, that would give uh, the volume of of the parallel uh, that is spanned by these three tangent vectors, um, and and therefore this is the factor that we need to include in in a precise definition of our integral. Now, of course, um, this you might be familiar with, and indeed it's easy to check that the triple product really just recovers the Jacobian of um, this particular uh, transformation of coordinates. So indeed, when this is a faithful parameterization, uh, that is that amounts to, to this being a coordinate change over the region R, and therefore uh, it's easy to see that the determinant will never be zero, and therefore uh, will be uh, the right factor to include to describe the integral, to go from an integral over AB space to go to an integral over XYZ space.